Let's take a look at a car loan in particular, uh, although of course most loans operate generally the same way. So this could be for a car, for a boat, for some other thing. Uh, so let's suppose we borrow $15,000 with a term of four years. That means we're going to pay it off over the course of four years. Um, the 8% is our APR. We're going to assume this is compounded monthly. If we're not told, generally that is the case, that it is monthly compounds. And in this case, we're going to buy a truck. Um, so let's use our TVM solver to find the first part, what our monthly payment on this loan is. So let's go to apps and then enter for finance, enter for TVM solver. N, well, over the course of four years, we're doing uh, monthly compounds and monthly payments, so four times 12. Our APR is 8%. Our present value, so this is what we have borrowed, this is 15,000. And our monthly payments are what we're interested in solving for. The future value should be zero. So in the future, hopefully, we owe nothing. Uh, you know, at the end of these four years, we owe nothing on this loan. Our payments per year would be 12. We're making monthly payments. Compounds per year, again, we'll assume, even though the problem doesn't state it explicitly, in general, we assume that uh, we are compounding monthly for pretty much all loans. Um, unless otherwise stated. So let's solve for our payment here. So we hit alpha and then enter to solve. If I put my present value in as positive, your payment is going to look negative. So the, the payment that we've got on this is 366.19. Again, with a little bit of rounding here. Um, how much will we pay in total? So uh, our loan is for 15,000. Right, that basically means that uh, we use that money to pay the dealership. Uh, so the truck was fifteen thousand. That doesn't actually mean, though, that we have paid fifteen thousand in total because when we pay back that money, there's interest involved. So if we were to take our monthly payment, that three sixty six nineteen, and say, okay, well, I made that every month, so times twelve, and I did that over the course of four years we would get our total amount paid. Now the only other piece we want to be careful about here is we did round this payment amount. So if we wanted to be a little bit more exact, uh, we should probably include these other decimal places. It, it's not the most realistic thing because we, we do have payments of dollars and cents. Now what we, we could also do as a conservative estimate, we could round this up so that we don't do uh, you know an under payment, but in general this should be fairly close. So there are a couple different ways uh, around this or ways to look at it. Uh, but let's use our 366.19 and say okay well what does that look like if we do times 12 times 4 and we would get 17,000 and it should be larger than our loan uh, or than, than what we borrowed, right? 17,577 and 12 cents. So this is bigger than 15,000 because we had to essentially pay for getting that money up front. And that's essentially what interest is. Um, just as a quick aside, suppose we had rounded up our monthly payment. Uh, remember we said that decimal kept going. If we rounded it up, we said 366.20. Whoops, not there. Uh, here, 366.20 times 12 times 4. So just supposing we use that slightly larger number, um, notice that we get a very, very similar number here, 17,577, and where we see a change is in the cents. So those were within 50 cents of each other. Um, of course, if this is over a longer period of time, that will increase, would be off by maybe a few dollars, but we're, we're in essentially the same ballpark here. Um, okay, so then how much do we pay in interest over the course of this loan? Well, there are a couple ways to do this, um, right? The only difference between part B, the amount we paid in total, and the original amount of the loan was interest. So, okay, we took out a loan for 15000 We ended up paying 17,500, right, with a little bit of extra there. So the only difference there is interest that we ended up paying either to, to the dealership or to the bank, whoever we financed through. So we ended up paying an extra 2,000 
577 and 12 cents in interest. Now there's also a way to do this in your calculator. So if you go to apps and finance, but don't go into the TVM solver, scroll down and you're going to find some other buttons that might be helpful for us. So there are things like balance. This will tell you the balance uh, at some point in the middle of the loan if you'd like. Um, this symbol here is a sigma. That means the sum of, so the sum of the principal. Basically, how much have you paid toward the loan at some point in time? And then this one is the one we're gonna use, sigma int. So the sum of the interest. So the sum of the interest, well, this is from, uh, we have to tell it from what payment to what payment. So from our very first payment, one, and then we hit comma, and then two, in this case, our very last payment. Um, for other scenarios, we might be interested, you know, how much interest did I pay in the first year or the first two years? But this is for the entirety of the loan. So we had monthly payments for four years, so we could say four times 12, and it'll understand what you mean. You could also just put in 48 there. So from the first payment to the last payment, in this case, how much interest? Notice that we have a very similar number to what we found down here, 2,577.30. Why are these off a little bit? For the same reason we talked about before. If we go back into the solver, Right, 366.19, well, that wasn't really the full story. We had a little bit extra here. And even if we use 366.20, that's still not quite the full story either. So the reality is somewhere in between. Um, in general, though, right, we're in the ballpark by using um, either this uh, the method we did here in Part C, or we could use the calculator. Both of those are perfectly fine. They're going to be off by just you know 10 or 20 cents.